Good morning, and welcome to the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. We are happy to have you here today for an exciting announcement. Our three speakers today will be our director, Dr. Betsy Bennett, here at the museum, Terry Ledford, Jim Hunter, Jeff Schlotman, expert on rocks and minerals. But before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge a special guest here today with us, two of them actually, our director of the New Nature Research Center, Dr. Meg Lauman, and our secretary of Diener, Dee Freeman. Welcome. Now once Dr. Bennett, Mr. Ledford, and Mr. Schlotman have made their announcements or their remarks, we will assist each of your camera crews in taping or photographing our big reveal. You may stay as long as you like, and interviews with these individuals will be available after the announcement. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the director of this great museum, Dr. Betsy Bennett. Thank you, Amelia, and a top of the morning to all of y'all today. Uh, it certainly is a lucky day for the Museum of Natural Sciences because today I have the distinct honor of unveiling one of the largest and most important gifts in the museum's history. For 132 years, we have been the home of choice for some of North Carolina's greatest natural treasures, from Stumpy the Whale to the Acrocanthosaurus, from meteorites to mammals, we have the best examples of what came before us and live all around us today. Our collections to date have always answered the question, what we know. And now, in the new Nature Research Center, set to open in just 35 days, on April the 20th, we will provide for our visitors the opportunity to interact with the best scientists working on the most complex issues of our day. This new wing and these scientists will help all of us answer the question, how we know. And today, I am pleased to welcome a new collection of remarkable quality to be housed in the Nature Research Center. It has been donated by a generous anonymous donor, and it promises to be the star of a blockbuster exhibition. As you all know, the geography and geology of North Carolina is varied and rich. In a special place in Alexander County, called Hidden Night, North Carolina, on property belonging to Wren Adams, there happens to have been an amazing cosmic occurrence many millions of years ago that produced the largest number and greatest quality emeralds found anywhere in North America. And so one year ago today, our friend Terry Ledford, who is here uh, and will be speaking to you um, in just a minute, he discovered a vein beneath the earth that produced the largest and most beautifully formed emeralds the world has ever seen. A very wise and wonderful benefactor acquired these emeralds along with another famous cut emerald and some incredible hidden night and decided that the people of North Carolina should be able to see them and appreciate them in their own state museum. So, now I want to unveil this magnificent gift to the people of North Carolina. So on top, the most uh, famous Carolina emperor. At 64 carats, it is the largest cut emerald in North America. <clears throat> then on the second row there, you have three extraordinary uncut emeralds weighing in at 591 carats, 685 carats, and an amazing 1,225 carats. Unbelievable. They're all stunning in their form and clarity. And below, the magnificent hidden night pieces from the same property. And now, to tell you the story of how he found these amazing emeralds, 
I am pleased to introduce Terry Lefford, Jim Hunter. Terry? Hello, I see you all. Uh, we uh, found the, the Emperor um, in 2009, uh, is about 14, 15 foot deep. Uh, the three large crystals, we found those in 2011. They were around right at 20 foot deep. Uh, someone had dug a hole years ago, I don't know, maybe in the 70s or 80s, and they got within just a couple of inches of them and stopped. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and they, uh, so we, we found them uh, it was in April, I believe April, and then the hidden night, we found the hidden night in 2004. My partner, uh, Ren Adams, uh, helped me uh, uncover the hidden nights. He was, uh, he's 93 years old, he has a macular degeneration, and before he lost his eyesight, he was, uh, able to see the hidden nights, but when we found the emeralds, unfortunately, he had lost his sight to where he couldn't tell the emeralds, even though as large as they are, you know, he didn't, he couldn't tell the difference between them and the, and the quartz. But uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, <coughs> the emperor is, uh, it was cut in uh, to uh, look like the uh, Catherine the Great which is an emerald, uh, a Russian uh, brooch was made for Catherine the Great, and it was cut in a replica. It looks just like the Catherine the Great brooch that she wore. Thank you. And now Jeff Slotman, he's uh, a rock and mineral expert, is going to tell you about uh, why these are such important finds, Jeff? Good morning. Expert's a relative term, but I, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Um, so why are these so important? Well, let me mention a few different facts that will help to support why I think this is a huge, great win for North Carolina and for the museum. First of all, the emerald is the North Carolina state gemstone. And since it's the state gemstone, you'd think that we would have some here on display. And we do have a few of the smaller emeralds that are on display. However, when the big stones are found, it seems that when the press release comes out, they're automatically in the Smithsonian or in Houston or somewhere else. And we have not been fortunate enough to actually land them here. Here it is, North Carolina treasure. And how are these treasures available for the residents of North Carolina? So to have them here, I see that as a huge victory. Now, the big natural stones, there have only been 10 of them found since the emeralds started to be found in the 1880s. Only 10 of them have been found that have been 1,000 carats or bigger. One of those was stolen out of the Museum in, in, of Natural History in New York in the 1950s. So there's nine of them that are known, and there's one of them right there in the middle. So the rarity, over 130 years of collecting, and there's not that many out there, and we finally have one of those here. The top stone, the cut stone, the Carolina Emperor, at 64.83 carats, is the largest cut emerald that we've got out of North America. The previous large one was the 18.8 carat Carolina Queen. This is four times the size of it. And the Carolina Prince at 7.8 carats, this is eight times the size of that one. So, very large. Now. North Carolina has emeralds. Hiddenite has the emeralds. North Carolina is the only state to produce emeralds in North America, well, in the United States, but in North America. If you want emeralds, you go to Brazil, you go to Colombia, or somewhere else. So the rarity of having all the conditions line up such, such that you can find these emeralds, it's not a common thing. So we're very fortunate. Let me talk a little bit about the Hiddenites on the bottom here. So hidden night, and, and you notice the green coloration both for the hidden nights and the emeralds, that's because of the chromium content that will make them green. But the hidden nights are also relatively rare. The name hidden night 
named after William E. Hidden, whom Thomas Edison sent down to look for tungsten for his light bulbs in the 1880s. And they found these green lightning bolts up in the farmer's fields, which were the Hiddenite. And then they also, of course, found the emeralds, which were appreciative of. <laughs> but these Hiddenite crystals are not common to be found. Usually they're found just the crystal, and they're in a mud or a clay seam that runs through the ground. So to actually found, find them stuck to what we call matrix, which is a rock, to find them stuck against that rock is a relative rare thing. I've been collecting now for going on 50 years. I've been a mineral dealer, buying and selling. I've collected around the world. I go to the biggest shows. I've seen two hidden night on matrix in my life. I've heard about a third one that I've never seen in a well-known high-end collector's collection. But of the two that I've seen, one was a little smaller than your fist, and you really needed a magnifying glass. The person said, oh, here's a hidden night on Matrix. And I'm looking and looking. <laughs> no, it's over there. And I'm looking and looking, and I couldn't see it. So imagine my surprise when I ran into Terry out in the field, and he held it up. And I took a look, and it's like, oh my gosh, what is that? That's a hidden night on Matrix. Well, you're kidding. And we, he was 10 feet away, so uh, a whole lot of appreciation there. Rarity, yes, very rare. Now that particular piece was dug in 1927. It was dug out by Burnham Colburn. And for some of you, that named the Colburn Mineral Museum in Asheville. Well, he had actually operated the mine for two years, 27 and 28. And this came out then. It was actually set on someone's mantle. And it just recently became available, at which point Terry said, you wouldn't believe it. Look what's available. Now we said, we've got to get that in with this collection. Let's keep all these wonders together. Um, we've also got a cut stone here, and the significance of that is usually these, I mean, if you look over on the far side to that hidden eye crystal, and that's a very big hidden eye crystal. I buy and sell them, and the ones I buy and sell are small. So seeing something like that, it's like, oh wow. <laughs> so you think about a crystal like that natural crystal, and to have one big enough that you can cut a stone out of it is rather significant of it in and of itself. This cut one, this it was cut by a gentleman, Paul Burton, out of Winston-Salem. But to have one so that you've got the natural and the cut stone together is a great accomplishment. So how I view these, these are North Carolina treasures. And we are extremely fortunate to be able to bring them together in a collection that's right here on state property to say this is what you can find out there. It's an awareness, it's an education, it's North Carolina treasures made available to our residents. Thank you. Um, you are, so um, I guess uh, that concludes the formal part of the uh, press conference. Uh, of course, uh, you can interview Terry uh, and Jeff. Um, and uh, in your information there, uh, you've got how you can get, um, we had a photographer, Jeff Scoble, photograph um, all of these uh, emeralds and the hidden night. So you have high res uh, photographs. Uh, and Amelia can tell you how to go on um, an FTP site to get those uh, for your articles. Anything else, Amelia? Um, no, we've actually placed them on a Flickr site uh, here the, for the, uh, for the um, images. Okay. And I can give those to give you Okay, and, and can you access that Flickr site from our website? It, yes, or you can go right to Flickr. Okay. All right, well, that concludes the thank you all for being here. It's an exciting day.